Uh, hello, lovely people. Um, this is your weekly uh, Facebook Live Yoga Solutions broadcast with me, Mark J. Aquaviva. Um, yes. So, um, what to say? Well, well I, I just come back from uh, an amazing weekend up at, uh, in Lancashire with um, Debbie Farrar and um, and uh, so all the all the people that she <laughs> invited to come along for the workshop that we did there, myself and Abigail. Um, it was great. It was just so nice. Uh, really nice people. I, I would really recommend checking out Debbie if you can, if you're in the area, Lancashire area, and um, and work to her, work with her if you can. And and her partner Ross, he's a lovely man. Uh, they're both they're both very um, principled people and um, uh, doing the work. So um, yes, check check them out. I think Debbie runs. Um, yeah, she's got some uh, teach training courses, workshops, that sort of thing. Um, yes, amazing weekend. Uh, uh, yes, I couldn't ask ask for a better time. So uh, that was uh, what happened last weekend. What, what have we got coming up? Uh, I have the joint clinic at Santosha in Edinburgh coming up on Friday, Friday week, sorry. Um, I think that's the 17th of November, and then the last one of the year will be uh, the 6th of um, December. Come, come for those, uh, that if you're in the Edinburgh area, it's Friday afternoon, 2 till 5 p.m., bring anything you like, and we'll, we'll see what we can do to um, help you with your knee problems, your hip problems, your shoulder, your sciatica, your back, your whatever. Yeah? Okay. Um, Hang on, I'm getting a message here. What's this? Uh, please, that means the group. Thanks. Okay. Um, right, I have to just add someone to the group that wants to watch the live. So let's see. Okay, and oh, there we go. There you go, Deborah. All sorted. Okay. Um, so, what was I, what was I saying? Oh yes, things coming up. It's the Joint Clinic in Edinburgh, uh, two Fridays in the afternoon, um, 17th of November, 6th of December. Uh, come along with any issue. Uh, great for C great CPD for teachers. Um, and in Twickenham on Sunday, the December 3rd, I've got a workshop. So a regular group, we um, a day workshop. Uh, get a hold of uh, Heart Yoga. Uh, no, Heart Twickenham, that's it. Um, it, it's all on the website and on the Aquiva workshop page um, for booking that. Um, well, you have to connect to them directly. And, oh yes, this weekend, uh, this Saturday, um, is it Saturday? I think so, yes. Um, this Saturday, the 11th, I am in Anmering at Cindy Robbins Studio. Wonderful teacher, um, worked with me for many years. She's uh, done uh, probably at least 750 hours or 1,000 hours with me by now. Um, so come along to that if there's any spaces. I'm not sure there is actually, but there's two small, two workshops. You can book for both. Um, get hold of Cindy to deal with that. Okay. So I had a question. It was, it was put on my personal timeline, but um, I prefer it to. It's on, on here. Uh, so I copied and pasted it so I can see it whilst I, whilst I do this session. And it's from Gail. Hi, Gail. Um, thank you for your questions. They're, they're always really useful. So let's see. Not sure if this is the correct place. No, <laughs> next time. Um, but how how to safely do headstands? Okay, brain surgery years ago, and have and I have a fear of headstands since. Thanks. Okay. Yes, fear of headstands. Um, there is uh, there, there's a lot of um, f yeah there is a lot of fear around taking weight through your head. Um, uh, anyway, for a lot of people, uh, it, it's a sort of the relationship to the body is a, to sensations in the body is kind of interesting. There's, there's plenty of research going on at the moment that is um, uh, bringing light to the fact that um, uh, our, our sensations, what, what we feel is actually going on in the body, is so much more to do with interpretation than we might have thought. Um, uh, an example that was uh, given to me, and I think uh, this might be, I got, I'm not sure where I got this from, but I got it from, from someone. 
um, there, there was a there was a man who uh, was walking through the bush, and um, he felt some um, he felt something tickle his leg, and he wasn't too worried. He was walking through grass. He thought it was just the grass. And then uh, a, a few hours later, he was in hospital because it had a snake bite. Um, the result was several years later, he found himself in a similar situation, walking through grass, and he felt a tickle on his leg, and he leapt in agony at the pain of the thing that he felt. And um, turns out it was a bit of grass. It's um, th there is an interpretive quality to our sensation, and th and this. Um, uh, particularly with areas of neurosis, which is uh, brings me to the the thing around diagnosis as well. You know, when we have, um, you know, there is pain in the body. We we experience pain, and uh, it is telling us something. But uh, when we go and get it diagnosed, we we believe that the thing we're told is the cause of the pain. Um, it's not actually. It's a description. Uh, at best, it's a description of of um, the pain itself. It doesn't even tell us why. It just tells it tells us they're like fibromyalgia, for example. It's a description that of of uh, symptoms of your tissue hurting, fibromyalgia, uh, fibrous pain. That's what it means. So, um, so we go and get something diagnosed, and then we think we have this thing that is causing us pain. Um, mm, I'm going off on a tangent here a bit, but um, people have fear around taking weight through their head. They have fear around taking weight through their spine uh, because the, uh, they have fear of sensation in the spine. And, and uh, the, the, uh, quite often uh, the sensations that we are experiencing are simply something moving or something. It, it could be pressure. It could, it could pressure if you're taking weight through the head. Um, it could be the spine moving in the upper back, and when we are stiff, we don't necessarily, we're not familiar with feeling uh, that sensation. So we think that something's going wrong with our, with our backs, with our spines. And uh, other places, we have sensation all the time, but we get used to it because we have some sort of idea that we're doing it to become strong or we're doing it, it just happens when we do this thing, you know? So... Um, Fear around sensation um, will cause a problem. So, how to do headstand? Um, well, first of all, it's not the headstand that is important. It's not the achievement of the posture. It's the idea, you know, why would we do headstand, for example? And um, one of the reasons for doing it is that it helps you work out. Uh, the focus has gone, hang on, let me sort out my camera. Is that working? There you go. The um, a reason for doing headstand is to take weight through the spine, um, and in doing so, um, you learn to find uh, lines of support through the axis of the spine, which is kind of how we need to organise ourselves anyway. So let me just zoom out a bit. So, okay. So I was thinking about this, and um, what might be good if you if, if you've got something of weight that you can balance on your head. And uh, one of my students in Scotland, Jane, uh, Jane O'Hare, yeah, work with her if you can. She's uh, one of my uh, longest term students in Scotland and uh, she has magic touch. So if you can find Jane O'Hare Wellmond or Jane O'Hare, um, try and get to work with her one-to-one -one or, or something. Um, she, 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 um, she's got these uh, mouse type things with heavy stuff in it and she she uses them in class when she's teaching people how to be free in their necks and it's about taking weight through the spine you know so if you've got something of weight these are two kilo sort of wrist packs or something leg packs um, it's kind of good to use that to put on your head and then you can get us get the sense of what's the purpose of taking weight through the head it's uh, the the problem with headstand is when we if we take weight through the head and then retract we cause a problem because we distort the spine you see but if you meet the touch if you meet the weight if you meet the touch if you're not afraid of the contact then what happens is something useful as in we learn to take weight through the axis of the spine um, so there's one I've got I've got two of these 
the more the better. Because the more weight you find through the head and the skull and the, um, the spine, the more accurate you have to organize yourself so that the forces can travel freely through the neck. If you're busy pushing and holding, then that causes the problem, you see. So uh, th this takes me to the, you know, the, the relationship. The relationship to what you're doing is, is very important to know that it's safe. You know? um, it's important to be able to take weight through the head because the action of um, meeting that, that touch, um, it, uh, it makes the spine functional. It's, it's the retraction from space or the holding, pushing against things that causes the problem, do you see? But if you have, um, if it's simply relaxing into the touch so that you feel supported, it helps you find the center of things, you see? Helps you find the center of things. Um, it's kind of good, if you, if you like a little bit of anatomy, it's kind of good to know how the joints work. We, um, the, the, um, the joint between the skull and the, um, the first vertebra of the neck is like a it's like a cradle. Um, the atlas, it, it, the skull, sort of sits inside this cradle, and it, it sort of rolls around within it. It's like a like a ball in a cup. Okay, so the the uh, to release the first vertebra, the space between the, the skull and the first vertebra, what we need to do is to allow little Indian head nods, you know, the the, the side to side thing. It's like and it's the ball, it's the, um, it's the ball rolling around in the cup, side to side. Okay, so if you want to try little movements like that, you can do it with, with or without the, the weight on your head. You can just use the weight of the arms. You know, if you, if you hold a wrist and rest the shoulders, then the weight of the arms on the head gives you something to play with. Um, if you're not used to freeing up the neck, that might make you dizzy. But um, anyway. So the first vertebra freeing up is going to be side to side. It's that um, Indian head nod where the head sort of rolls side to side within the cup. Okay? It, the, there's also a forward to back aspect that's not so big. Okay? That's, that's more of a bending of the neck. We, we nod by bending the neck. But um, side to side will free up the first vertebra. And then if you find the axis, that's the title of the next vertebra. You just um, sort of spin the head on its axis, and it's got, there's a pin that goes up through the middle of the um, the atlas. There's a pin that goes up through the middle that um, allows you to float the head round. Okay, and if you if as you turn the head to one side, you feel the muscles on that side tightening, what you can do is sort of release the head to the side away from it before you turn. So that when you rest back through it, uh, you've got an axial sense of support. Okay. Um, <laughs> hi, Jane. I'm using your I'm using your mouse on your head thing. <laughs> um, if you uh, so uh, the ac so the the atlas is a sort of a little Indian head nod movement. The axis is the pin, and then you've got three and four, which is behind the throat here, and that's your head nodding, head lifting movement. Um, it's good not to, well, it's good to be centered in that place so that it, it, you, you don't hang off the neck, nor do you lift in the middle of the neck. It's good to be centered in that place. So you, the feeling is to breathe, breathe in the throat and set and release the breath. Good. Um, and then below that, there's four, five, six, and seven. Um, the, the difficulty with headstand is when people take weight through their heads, they do one of two things. Uh, if there if there's any fear around it, then the weight they take what they do um, what they do if there's fear, then you might want to try and fix the neck like this, which um, doesn't do very nice things for the tissue along the back of the spine here. It, it, it overly relies on that for weight bearing, or they do this where they pull up their shoulders to to scrunch into the neck to brace the whole thing together. Um, that's a fear response, and it might be in response to sensation. But the thing that needs to happen around the bump of the base of the neck is that we need to be able to get through that. And that tends to be where the uh, compaction occurs between the, the, the bit that sticks out 
at the top of the shoulders that we usually hang our shoulders from. And that's actually taught in yoga, you know, Jalandra Banda. Um, what we need to do is to find a way through that part of the spine if you want to take weight through the head. So the feeling is how to, and it's to do with how we organize our shoulders, you see. So if the shoulders are hanging off at the front or hanging, pulling down at the back, either way we're pulling on our necks. What we need to do is free up the wings. I hope you can see, I'm, I'm guessing that you can see. Free up the wings so that you can find a way of moving through that part of the spine uh, from the head. It's, it's the head sort of releasing back and down through the bump of the base of the neck. And it's quite an, uh, an unusual feeling for those of you. Oh, that's strange. <laughs> the camera went off. But um, uh, it's quite an unusual feeling for those of you that are used to holding yourself up with Jalandra Banda, you see. So it's a feeling of getting yourself through. And I think I did this once with shoulders. So let's see. Um, this might be um, an interesting way of looking at it. Um, if it, it, headstand is about taking weight through the head and taking weight through the spine in a way that leaves you feeling feeling supported, okay? And those those investigations were there to help you find the freedom and to feel that it's okay to take weight through the head at, at various sort of um, articulatory di directions, what we can do then is start to practice um, taking weight on the ground. And it doesn't have to be a great deal. And what you can do with your hands, um, instead of make sure that the shoulders are, are neither sort of hanging off the neck so that the neck wants to collapse, nor uh, pulling away from the neck so you feel like you're pushing out into the spine. Uh, both of those things will cause tension. What we want is a pair of shoulders that are kind of out, out of the way. Um, sort of not really in the way, not pulling on the spine in any shape. And then you can just play with taking weight through the head with the idea that we want to relax the skull. And it's okay if you're not, if you're scared, you'll be tense in the skull. And if you're tense in the skull, you will create um, a sort of a problematic response in the head, in the muscles. If you're okay with the sensation of pressure, and you can be as gentle as you like, um, if you're okay with the sen se sensation of pressure, then you can use that release to allow the bones of the skull to become mobilized, which is kind of what we need, you know, all the various um bones of the skull are, are they're meant to move a little they're meant to breathe a little okay so if you can relax into the head and try out different angles let it go wrong and notice that it's okay and i i i use my hands to get interested in the bump of the base of the neck because that tends to be where people push against when they come up and that causes pressure unnecessarily and tension. And, and what you're doing is you're pulling against the tissue of the neck, which is not good. That tends to sort of pull on the cranial nerves and other things. So what we need to do is to find from our exploratory giving of weight through the head, the head itself becomes the support. That is headstand. And we want to find support that travels through this rounded part of the spine. So the bump of the base of the neck has to soften through the shoulders uh, to find that. And, and when you find that through line, taking weight through the head, and in this orientation, it'll be a little more through the forehead to start with. You know, if you're, if you're through the axis of the spine in this sort of position, then to start with, you're a bit more on your forehead, it, but the position changes, the touch changes as you move, you see. But we want to be through the axis of the spine. That's the key. Without any reason for the spine to brace against it. And, and just this will do, you know, just to find a sense of support through the spine. And I am testing it by taking the knees off. Okay. And uh, that's always the job. How do I how do I let go of tension through to the ground and uh, the ground is underneath the head. How do I let go of tension through to the ground and feel supported through my structure? And that will be the axis of the spine. 
the the, the only thing the spine um, hates is being pushed in the coronal plane, in the transverse plane. It likes be, it doesn't like being distorted um, side to side. It get it, it becomes tense then because its its mobility is in that is in the planar joints, is in the side to side movements. You know, so that's where we can be totally free um, in the coronal plane, transverse plane. But we are entirely strong through the axial plane, central plane, and headstand gives you a chance to play with that. So you know, if you if you um, Let's see. Uh, let's get this to rise up. Good. And then I'll switch it off. Clever little gizmo that follows me, but it does go wrong sometimes. So if we, um, yes, let's mm -hmm. angle it up slightly more. If we can get used to the feeling of taking weight through the head and in a way that doesn't cause a problem for the spine then we can sort of explore that. Um, I'm not sure you want that view. <laughs> Let's try the other side. Um, we can explore that. And it's, it's just taking weight, and we want to feel supported through the spine, and, and the head should still be free. Uh, there is a, a responsive touch where you use the head. I wouldn't advise. I, I'm showing you that it's free. You don't have to use. You don't have to take your arms off for that to work for you. Um, but if you can take weight through the spine in a way that leaves you supported through the axis, then it's a it's a small deal to um, to uh, to take the weight off the feet. You know, it's not a big deal. And if you need a surface, there's a surface. You know, it's, it's not nothing wrong with um, supporting yourself whilst you're working out lines of support through the through the head. See, so it's not a big deal. Uh, you know, all sorts of variations. I'm not suggesting you do do these variations, but what we're looking for is standing through the head in a way that leaves the spine free. Um, the coming up uh, should not be a jump. If you have to jump, it's because the two halves of the body are separate. Um, it's important to, if you, if you want to come up, it's not the point. Uh, it's, it's nice because it's kind of easier to get the weight going through the spine, but only if you feel safe. If you don't feel safe, you'll get scared and you'll uh, get tense. And tension is the thing we're trying to release. The thing that makes it okay to come up uh, is when the, the two halves of the body belong to each other. So it's um, there's a sort of a centering, uh, there's, a, there's a sort of, um, what, what is there? But once we're taking care of the spine, then it's a case of instead of trying to throw this weight over the over my base i need this weight of the legs to be given to my base so it's simply a transfer of weight it's not a it's not a launch so we can ground breathe and release into the movement okay uh, so uh, uh, you sort of answered your own question gail um, um in some ways uh, how, how do i how to do safely do headstands? Um, there, I have fear, you know. And I, uh, I had years ago, and I have a fear of headstands. Well, if you can, if you can lose the fear and explore intelligently, explore the thing with um, with a sense of uh, what you're doing it for. You know, you're trying to integrate your head and the various vertebrae of the spine so that you can rest through them. And when you have that, and when you have the support for that to go on, uh, then you let go of tension and the body comes together. And the spine, the, spine, the joints, they like being together in a, in a, in a happy way. Yeah? The problem is when we, um, when we push against joints and hold position, uh, that's when joints suffer. 
that's when the next up is. I uh, um, haven't really got time, I've gone over time, but um, here's an example. You know. Here he is. Um, you see that, that stuff at the back, this stuff? That's, the, that, that's supposed to be there just to float the head in space, you know, so you can relax. It's not meant to be for support. So if you, if you start doing this stuff, then structurally you're collapsed, but you're relying on the, the holding, of, oops, <laughs> that's what happens, <laughs> not really. But you're, rely, you're relying on the holding of the tissue to hold you up. And that, it's not designed for the job, the, the structure is. You want the weight to go through the structure. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get through the structure so the spine can release. Okay. So we don't rely on the surface stuff so much. Right, I hope that's um, of use to everyone. Um, if uh, nothing else, just taking away the fear of touching something with your head um, and having that relationship to space that where you're not reaching nor retracting, but where you find support from the space above. But that's a useful thing. And uh, it's sorts out half the equation of all neck and shoulder problems, the, the other half being the use of the shoulders and the body. So, okay, so I, I hope that was useful. Um, I, I think I've gone a bit over time, so I better stop. Um, thank you so much. Uh, yes, I'll see you same time, same place next week. Uh, if you want to come to Anne Ring, do book on with Cindy before Saturday, uh, or I'll see you at maybe at the Joint Clinic in Edinburgh. Friday week. Lots of love. I'm Mark J. Aquaviva of the Aquaviva School of Yoga, signing off. See you next time. Namaste.